Good afternoon, and thank you again for being part of this meeting today. I'm Alfred Sanchez. I'm the president and CEO of the Greater Miami Chamber, and I'm glad to welcome all of you uh, as we hope this will be the first of a series of meetings sponsored jointly by the uh, Greater Miami Chamber of Commerce and the Beacon Council. Uh, before we begin, let me go over some housekeeping rules. As I said, we have about a thousand people who are joining us. And so in order to really manage the conversation, uh, I want, we are gonna have all of the participants uh, placed on mute at the beginning. Uh, there will be a question and answer period at the end of all the presentations to submit a question. And this is very important to submit a question. You need to go to the Q and A tab on your control bar at the bottom of your screen click raise hand and submit your question in writing. It's important you submit it in writing. Uh, when it's your turn to pose your question uh, to the panel, you'll be alerted by the Q&A chat by our administrator who will open your line and you'll be able to ask your question directly. Questions will only be drawn from the Q&A tab, so it's important for you to have your questions there and your hands raised. Um, I really want to thank everybody for your cooperation on this. As you can see, a huge town hall of a thousand people, it's, it's difficult to manage. We want to make it a productive one for everyone. I know we have uh, several elected officials with us on the, uh, on the call today, and I want to welcome all of you for, and thank you for being a part of this call today. Um, we have a packed agenda, and I want to make sure that we have plenty of time for the questions at the end. So let me begin now by turning it over to my colleague, Mike Finney, who's the president and CEO of the Beacon Council. Mike. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Alfred, thanks a lot for the introduction and the overview. Uh, my comments are brief. I really just want to thank the Greater Miami Chamber of Commerce, of course, Miami-Dade County, the SBA, uh, the Department of Economic Opportunity, and the Small Business Development Center for participating in this panel. Uh, obviously, we want to try and get as much information out to our business community and to our citizenry as possible. Uh, the, the Beacon Council's role in all of this will be to try and figure out how to best support our businesses uh, as we move through this crisis. We all know that Congress has been working on a fairly significant uh, recovery uh, bill, and uh, we've been following that and trying to take as much detail as we can with expectations that we'll play a role in helping uh, shepherd that forward. Obviously, we don't have any details to share at this point because uh, we know that SBA and so many other key organizations will be directly involved. But obviously, we look to, to be a partner and we appreciate this opportunity. And thanks again for allowing the Beacon Council to be a part of this effort. With that, Thank you. Yeah, with, okay. with that uh, I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to Mayor Carlos Jimenez. Uh, he has been, I think, at the forefront of, of all of this, uh, this response to the, the COVID-19. Uh, I, I think like most of you, I've been following his daily uh, videos that he's produced, and it's certainly informative and provides uh, a, a lot of, of key information so that we can all be as prepared as possible. I know he's gonna provide us with some updates uh, based on uh, current actions. And so Mr. Mayor, I turn it over to you to uh, make your presentation. Thank you. And I don't know if uh, this, my internet, it says my internet uh, connection is unstable, so I don't know how, how well I'm getting through. So uh, thank you, Michael, for, for that introduction. I want to thank the Greater Miami Chamber for uh, hosting this virtual town hall. What we're doing at Miami-Dade County, obviously, my, my main concern is the um, health and well-being of the people of Miami-Dade County. We've taken a lot of measures that we know are difficult for the business community uh, and the economy. And so, uh, Although my focus has been on the health and welfare of the people of Miami-Dade, my secondary focus is really on how we are going to come through this economically. And can anybody hear me? Yes, okay. Um, I've, um, last week, as we heard about this economic package, I've asked Mike, Michael Finney and the people of RER, that's our, our department that deals with economic development, to get together to work out a framework of how we can help our small businesses uh, recover how we can help put the money into the our employ the employees which really uh, what we're trying we're trying to do is trying to get the employees that work for those businesses that have had to shut down uh, to get the money in their pockets to also implore uh, employee employers not to lay off 
their employees because we do believe that the help is coming from the federal government. And the, the initial uh, information we got is that if you do uh, let go of, of your employees that you may be penalized later on for doing that. So I, I hope that of the thousand people that are watching that you're all employers, please try to keep your employees as much as possible. We are going to try to help you as much as possible, you know, through this entire process. I know that the SBA is online and I'm, I'm offering the, the, the Small Business Administration all the, the resources of Miami-Dade County. We need to do this together. Uh, we need to get the money into our small business and into our employees' uh, pockets as soon as possible so that, you know, this particular crisis doesn't get worse than what it really is right now. And so um, one, other, one other message to the employers right, right now, if you happen to have a business that is open, I urge you, I'm telling you, practice social, social distancing. Uh, uh, make sure that you're complying with all the orders that we've issued in terms of how to operate your business, including inside your business. Make sure your employees are also practicing social distancing. Make sure also urging you, any employee of yours that's 65 years or older or has underlying medical condition, please allow them to work from home. Uh, safeguard them as much as possible because actually if we safeguard those that are most vulnerable, then the impact of this virus is going to be much, much lower. And that's what we've been trying to do here in Miami-Dade. But this, again, our focus is now on trying to get money back into your pockets and get money back into your employees' pockets as soon as possible. That's why we're here to help. We've already set this uh, a framework. We're working around a framework with, with the Beacon Council, Miami-Dade County, and hopefully the uh, Small Business Administration will, uh, again, I'm offering our help in any way possible to get this done. Phone calls, computers, people, whatever it is you need to, to uh, put this money out as soon as possible, Miami-Dade County is there. And I'm, I'm available for any questions after the presentations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we really appreciate the leadership you've shown uh, early. And uh, as uh, Mike was saying, all of the uh, daily videos that you've put out, I think have helped a great deal to uh, quell a lot of brave nerves out there. And we really appreciate from the business community your, uh, stall, your staunch support of uh, everything that will help us recover quickly. Um, up next with us is uh, the SBA. They have a presentation on economic injury disaster loans, which I think all of us should be paying attention to and probably are. And with us today is Victoria Guerrero, who is the South Florida District Director for the SBA and Althea Harris, who's the Supervisory Economic Development Specialist with the SBA. Victoria, let me turn it over to you. Uh, Victoria, your, your uh, mic is muted. Thank you very much. Can you hear me now? Okay. Lovely, <laughs> wonderful. Victoria, can you, uh, we're, we're turning it over to you. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? We can hear you now, yes, thank uh, you. Okay, wonderful. So first and foremost, I wanna say thank you um, to the Beacon Council, to the Greater Chamber of, uh, of, um, Greater Chamber of uh, Greater Miami and to the Miami-Dade County and Mayor Jimenez. I wanna say thank you to all and thank you for the um, invitation to this town hall. Um, first and foremost, I do want to um, speak directly to our small business owners. I want you to know that the SBA, along with our resource partners, such as the SBDC, our SCORE chapters, our WVCs, we all are here to support you during this time of need. Um, not only at this moment through this disaster, but throughout the year, you can count on us to help you with any questions that you may have um, specifically in, in at this moment in, in reference to our economic injury disaster loan that the SBA is offering to small business owners. Uh, with that being said, I do want to turn it over to my colleague Althea Harris, who will take you through a quick presentation on this particular loan that may be able to answer many questions that many of you may have. Althea? Althea, Althea, your mic is muted. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. I think you can hear me now. Yes, we can. Right? Perfect. Thank you so much. 
Uh, I really appreciate all of you being on the call today. Uh, we're going to go very quickly through the slides so that you have a baseline of information about the SBA's disaster program. Uh, on your screen is our administrator, Jovita Carranza. She has uh, committed the entire agency, as you would expect, to the recovery of our nation's economy. And SBA is playing a critical and vital role in that recovery and through our economic injury disaster loan program currently is how that is rolling out. Next slide, please. So when I talk about the economic injury disaster loan, the basics are who is eligible to apply. Right now, all small businesses, uh, small agricultural cooperatives and aquaculture businesses and many private nonprofit organizations are eligible to apply for the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. Uh, this is a nationwide disaster declaration, so uh, wherever you are in the country, you can apply. Next slide, please. The criteria is that we are going to look at your credit history. It is not necessarily a deal breaker. Uh, we will look at the entirety of your application to make a determination. Credit is just one of the factors we will consider. However, a very important uh, factor is your ability to repay the loan. So that is something um, that we will be looking at and uh, you must have a presence in the United States to be eligible. Right now, our loan program it has a maximum of up to $2 million. Can you go back, please? $2 million, thank you, for private for small businesses, 2.75% for nonprofits. The term can be as long as 30 years. Not everyone will get 30 years. It depends on your ability to repay. This is a working capital loan. So, I'm sorry, one more time, go backwards. Uh, this, is, this loan is used to pay your fixed debts, payroll, accounts payable, and other bills that would have been, you would have been able to pay ordinarily had the disaster not occurred. This is not a loan to replace your lost sales or profits. It is not a loan to help you expand your business. It is not a loan to help you buy someone else's business. SBA has loan products for that under normal circumstances, under our normal programs. The disaster loan program is just for our response to the coronavirus. Next slide, please. The collateral requirements. The loans under $25,000 do not require collateral. Anything over $25,000 requires collateral. SBA is willing to take a second and even third lien position on whatever real estate is available. We will not decline you for a lack of collateral, but if you have something to pledge, we will require you to pledge it. Next slide. Uh, I mentioned that small businesses are eligible. Um, pretty much most uh, small businesses are eligible. Hotels, uh, manufacturers, service-based businesses, travel agencies, restaurants, retailers. You must have a physical presence in the United States to be eligible. You cannot only have a P.O. box. Next slide, please. So our working capital uh, loans are different from our other loans. You uh, can find out about our regular loan programs at sba.gov. For this disaster loan, you go to sba.gov forward slash disaster. There is no cost to apply for this disaster loan. You can apply for our loan and decide not to take it later. What you won't be able to do is get a loan if you don't apply for it. So we're urging uh, business owners to apply. Next slide. 
Oh, uh, incidentally, uh, you can have an existing SBA loan of any kind right now and apply for this disaster loan. So just having an SBA guaranteed loan for your business or even a Hurricane Irma or Hurricane Michael loan does not uh, prevent you from applying and receiving a loan under this program. Uh, on the screen are the forms that we're going to require. Um, we are going to request uh, your tax returns, a schedule of liabilities, and your personal financial statements. You will be required to authorize the, S, uh, the IRS to send us your tax returns. Next slide. And of course, uh, we may ask you for additional pieces of information. Next slide, please. And all of what we're requiring is available on our website. The uh, private nonprofits who are eligible are uh, listed here, some nursing homes, food kitchens, museums, senior citizens and daycare centers, playhouses, rescue organizations, shelters. The ones who are not currently eligible are uh, those that are organized under the IRS as sections 501C, D, and E nonprofits. You'll need to prove your nonprofit status if you are eligible. Next slide, please. Some ineligible businesses are agricultural enterprises. Any religious organization is not eligible. Charitable organizations, businesses that are done as hobbies, gambling concerns, casinos and racetracks, and real estate developers who are primarily engaged in subdividing real property into lots and developing them for resale, not eligible for this program. Next slide, please. How you apply, you go to our website, sba.gov forward slash disaster. There is a paper application available on our website. You can, and I recommend that you download it just to look at it to see what we're going to ask you for. However, uh, you can submit a paper loan application. I don't recommend it simply because once you take the time to do it on paper and send it to us, another human being is going to have to enter that information, which will delay the process. If you decide to do a paper loan do application, do not also do a uh, online application. It will simply confuse things. I'd like to share our 1-800 number for disaster customer service, 800-659-2955. And if you would like to send an email, you may do so at disaster customer service. That's all one word, disaster customer service at sba.gov. Our website is currently uh, undergoing maintenance. As you might imagine, many people are trying to access the website all at the same time. So we are increasing our capacity to be able to uh, manage all of the applications that are coming in. Next slide. Is that our last one? Okay, right. Uh, thankfully, we have uh, folks who are helping us. Our resource partners, the Small Business Development Centers, our SCORE Volunteer Network, and the Women's Business Centers and the Veteran Business Outreach Centers are all available to assist you at no cost. You can find who our resource partners are on our website, sba.gov forward slash local hyphen assistance. Uh, today on the web, on this web uh, cam or it's like a town hall. We do have our Small Business Development Center located at FIU on here. So uh, we are glad that Brian Van Hook can be with us today. Again, you do not have to pay to apply for this program and you do not have to pay to get help to apply to the program. Thank you. Thank you so much, Althea, for that uh, very thorough presentation. As uh, you were going through, I was looking through some of the chat, some of the questions, and one of the things that uh, th there many people are interested in is getting a copy of this presentation. And 
uh, if, if I can ask Spencer and uh, Maria to put a, a link to it on the, on the chat, that, I think that would be the best way to do it. If you don't mind, Althea. No, we don't have a problem with that. Uh, if um, I can send it uh, somewhere where it can be posted, um, or you all can send it out however you like. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks I really so much. Great information. Uh, I know you answered a lot of the questions that were coming up, and I, one of them was the fact that uh, the uh, the website, uh, because of the traffic, is crashing, and I know that you're trying to to deal with that. Yeah, may I just add one more thing? Uh, yeah. Locally here, we are hosting webinars twice a day. We are hosting virtual office hours twice a day uh, where people can call in and get their questions answered. Uh, they can get the schedule of that on our web calendar of events on our local website, sba.gov forward slash South Florida. So you already know it's the SBA website. At the end of that, just put South Florida and you can Thank find you. us. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll, we'll, we'll put that also on, on the chat. Perfect. Uh, next, we have the Florida Department of uh, Economic Opportunity and the Executive Director Ken Lawson with us. I know we also have Michael DiNapoli, who's the Director of Small and Minority Business Capital. Uh, Ken, let, let us hear from you first and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me and Michael. We really appreciate this time. As you know, we're going through unprecedented crisis and at DEO, we're working hard to be helpful in two categories. One, for those who've lost their jobs, if you go to our website, floridajobs.org, and click on the icon for reappointment assistance, we give you information on how individuals who lost their jobs by virtue of the mitigation efforts of COVID-19 can receive unemployment benefits. And also there's a section for employers for some type of set off. If you have an employee that you're gonna um, dismiss for eight weeks with no pay, there's a way for them to receive benefits. In addition to if you cut their hours, a way for us to fill that gap. In addition to that website, I'd like for folks to go to floridadisaster.biz. What we're doing is collecting information from the various businesses across the state of Florida to understand the impact, the losses. So when federal funds come available, we're able to give that information to the feds. But just like Athea said, our call lines and also our online resources are taxed in amounts. I'll give you, for instance, on March 7th, the end of that week, we had 28,000 calls to our call center. The end of March 14th, that week, we had 224,000 calls. And the governor, in his press conference yesterday, explained that just on Monday, we had 21,000 new applicants for unemployment benefits. And then after that, we had 31,000. And on average in a week, it's 5,000. By virtue of this crisis, we're seeing an influx of individuals applying for help. And at DEO, we're gonna do our best to help everyone, individuals and small businesses. With that being said, I'm gonna ask Mike to join us in this conversation and walk through on how to apply for the Small Business Bridge Loan, to help you bridge from where you are now to the SBA loan. Michael, please join us. Thank you, Ken. Thank you for that handoff. And thank you everybody for having us here today. Thank you to the council as well as the chamber for allowing us to talk about what we have, offering, uh, have to offer here at DEO. Um, so I just wanna go through a few slides. I guess I'll wait for the slides to come up. There we go. Great. Oop, wrong one. So while he's getting the slides up, I'm going to go through. Uh, there's about 20 slides, but I'm, I'm going to not stop at every one of them. I'm going to briefly talk about each one of them. So let me just start by talking about the uh, emergency bridge loan that we have here that we offer through uh, DEO. Uh, this was activated by the governor. At his discretion, he made $50 million available. Um, we, we have tremendous, tremendous uh, app, a number of applications coming through. Just like uh, Ken had said, the calls coming through for uh, reemployment, we've received a, an unbelievable influx of phone calls that have been coming to our office. We stood up an online application, first time we've done this. We, we have an application available on our website. Ken mentioned the website floridadisaster.biz, and I'll, I'll walk through that a little bit. So two things I want to accomplish today is tell you a little bit about the loan program, and then tell you a little bit about how to apply and how to direct your small businesses to apply. So 
uh, let me see where we started here. So again, the small business emergency bridge loan, uh, we've been doing this for uh, quite a long time, going back into the mid 80s, uh, I'm sorry, the, the early 90s for this program. Uh, today, this program was set up for um, COVID-19 uh, to be eligible. You need to have at least two employees into a max of 100 employees. It's available through the entire state. Uh, need to be a for-profit, for-profit, privately held business here in Florida. The application period began March 9th and goes through uh, May 8th. Next slide. So here are some of the terms, and all of this is available on our FloridaDisaster.biz website. There's a lot of um, a lot more information. I didn't want to go through every piece of information, but just the, the highlights of this loan program. So these are state dollars. These are, these are taxpayer dollars. We understand the importance to offering uh, support, uh, a bridge to something. And in this case, this bridge is to uh, the emergency um, economic injury loan by SBA. So we encourage you to also apply for that as well. Not on our website, but certainly through the SBA website. So term is one year. After one year, it is considered in default. The loans uh, must be, uh, the application must be completed by an individual or collectively individuals who own 51% of the business. One loan per business, max is 50,000. Now I didn't put it on this slide, but there are circumstances where we can go up to 100,000. Uh, that needs to be uh, documented uh, for the need by the business. Um, the SBA consultants can walk you through that as, uh, as you, you think that you need the 100,000, they can help you and assist you with the documentation. Um, this is an interest-free loan for one year. There is no interest charge. There is no penalty charge for a period of one year from the date of signing the promissory note. After one year, it does not go to a term loan. This is a one-year uh, loan once that one year is up, it is considered in default if not paid in full. You can pay it at one time, you can pay it over time, but after that one year, it is considered in default. So it's very important that you also find alternative funding after um, that one year is up. Next slide. So here's the website. Uh, we also, we've got two um, places where you can go. As Ken mentioned, there's the FloridaDisaster.biz, or you can also go, we put the other alternative site here, RebuildFlorida.gov. Um, either one will get you to this page here, and we've put a big red bar right across the top there. Uh, click here for COVID-19 to apply for the emergency bridge loan. Next slide. It'll take you here, and I didn't do an entire page. I didn't want to put too many slides up, but uh, this page continues. There's a lot of information here that I just mentioned, and it goes down uh, quite a bit uh, with information, uh, also with a Q&A. So if you click right there, it'll take you right to the application. Next slide. Again, it'll take you to, to this slide, which is our online application. Click here to sign in or create an account. It's the same button. Next slide. Once you sign in, or once you begin your, your sign up, I should say, it'll ask you for a username and password. Uh, you either click the login button or you click the sign up button. Uh, first time users will need to click the sign up button. If you're a returning user to check the status of your account, you can click the login <coughs> button. And on the right hand side there, you can see as come, as a returning user, you can click to, uh, to come in as well and it'll take you to right to your account. Next slide. Um, here's a, once you click in to a, your application, it'll, it'll take you to your application or it'll take you here to say a new loan application or my, you can see next to that, it'll say my loan application. It'll tell you that you either want to start a new one or, or an existing one. You can go forward. And I'm going to go through these slides pretty quickly. This is pretty intuitive. The answers need to be um, entered here. You can see the eligibility there. We follow many of the SBA eligibility requirements, uh, certain businesses that are considered ineligible. If you do have any questions, I would tell you to talk to your SBDC consultants, or uh, you can even go to the SBA eligibility list, list and it, it, it's much more detailed. Next slide. So here's where we need some more detailed information on the applicant. It's very simple. 
uh, answer the questions and, and continue to move forward through the application. Next. So this, we stood up in about a week. So we, we, we have, actually there's seven sections that need to be completed here. Um, it'll create, once you log in and create your account and, and ask, answer the questions that are asked in application in the uh, section one of the application, it skips over section uh, three, four, and five, because this is a, we, we pulled this out of an existing application. So we wanted to get it stood up quickly because we knew we were gonna have an unbelievable demand for it. So section three, four, and five are not required, but I am gonna tell you um, that section four has the project summary. That is where you enter the dollar amount. So, um, the nice thing about having SBA consultants follow after your presentation is that they'll always fill in the gaps where I've missed. So um, I don't want to spend too much time. I know everybody's time is, uh, is valuable, so I'm going to keep moving along. Again, here's applicant information. Uh, um, again, as much information as the applicant can provide would be extremely helpful. You can keep going here. So this is what I was referring to. Section one is completed by the applicant, then four, five, and six are completed, are checked off automatically. But we are gonna ask, and we're trying to get the word out to go into section four to complete the dollar amount requested there. So you can, again, keep moving forward. It's just some more questions on the slide. We've been sharing this slide with a lot of, uh, a, a lot of people that are requesting how to walk through the application. Um, all this information is extremely helpful in capturing what we need. This section, I just want to pause on section three here, is it's asking you if you're working with a third party lender or you can see there a small business development center network. We'll ask you to fill that out. It does show that it's required being that it is uh, a red asterisk on it, but if you see up on the top there, it says, I am completing this application independently. If you check that, it will allow you to go to the next section without filling out this information. But I encourage you to fill it out so you can get to a, an SPDC consultant. We keep going. This is section four where it automatically tells you to move forward, but you can go back into the sections. And I know it's a little blurry, I apologize, but working capital is where you would wanna put in the max loan amount that you're looking for. That's helpful in us uh, in sending it to review and having it go to underwriting. We keep going. Section seven is, is the most important. And I encourage applicants to sit down at their laptop, at their desktop, and fill out the application with all of their supporting documents. Uh, it would be great if you could do it at one time and not have to go back in and, or have uh, somebody contact you. If you can do a complete application at one time, that's gonna be incredibly uh, helpful to get the application moving forward so there's no backlog. Here are some of the, the documents that are needed. And Althea did a great job in describing the documents that were needed for the SBA application. I would encourage you to do both at the same time. The same documents in many cases are they gonna be the same on each um, uh, loan, uh, both the Florida Emergency Bridge Loan and the SBA. So here's just another slide that talks about what we're asking for, some of the you know, credit report information. Here's some of the data that you can also upload as well that's gonna be needed for the application. Keep going. So once you get to section seven, you show all the, app, uh, all the attachments are uploaded that you, you have entered, all of your documents are completed. It'll tell you that you can submit the application since they're all checked off. Once you submit the application, I will caution you, you cannot go back in to make any more additions to the application. It's considered complete. And we're gonna leave it in the SPDC consultant's hands to uh, review the application and get it to underwriting as fast as possible. One of the intuitive aspects that we've built into this system is that when, we, when an application is submitted, it's gonna pick up by county the, where the applicant's business is located and it's gonna automatically trigger that to the SBDC um, um, division. I believe there's nine divisions within the SBDC network. It's automatically gonna go to their disaster specialist or their point of contact or their director uh, to tell them that an application has been submitted. If, if it's not completed, if it needs to be looked at and reviewed, and then of course go to underwriting, those consultants are gonna be notified and they're gonna have to go in and basically a handoff of the application. Um, I will leave it at that. If, uh, if anybody would like to call, they can certainly call with inquiries, but I encourage everybody to go online, submit their application online. I'll turn it back to you.
Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, very informative presentation. I know we, we had a lot of questions and comments as you were speaking, so I'm sure we'll get to that. Uh, this was extremely useful because we've been getting a lot of calls from folks saying they can't get through. They, they really would love to get a walkthrough, so that was terrific. Really appreciate your spending time. For everyone who, who is on, I uh, just want to make sure that you know we will have all the presentations posted on both the Beacon Council's website as well as the Chamber's website. You, if you look in the chat, you'll see the direct connections to that, as well as a recording of this, uh, of this town hall you can uh, replay it later on, and those links will also be on our website. Um, uh, I also want to remind everybody that in order to get your questions asked, please go to the Q&A section at the bottom, not the chat, the Q&A section, and make sure that you raise your hand and you uh, write your question there so that our folks uh, can, can see it and get to it. I know some of you have said you submitted it, the questions yesterday. That doesn't help us. You need to resubmit it again today. So I thank you for that cooperation. Um, as Michael alluded to, we have the uh, uh, Small Business Development uh, uh, Council with us today. Uh, Brian Van Hook, who's the South Florida Regional Director, uh, will be talking about the emergency bridge loans and I'm sure some other resources available. Brian, let me turn it over to you. Thanks. Thanks, Alfred. And I want to thank the Beacon Council. I want to thank the county. Um, and I want to thank all the participants for being here today as well. Um, I know that you guys have a lot of other Zoom meetings and, Sky and Skype calls and uh, webinars and things. So we just appreciate you guys getting on and we're going to do our best to get you some good information. Um, as they mentioned, I am regional director of the Small Business Development Center at FIU's College of Business. If you pay federal and state taxes, we are your SBDC, we're your local SBDC, because we receive federal funding from the Small Business Administration, as well as funding from the state of Florida. And then FIU matches kind of what we get um, from the federal side. And then also just like the business owners, we hustle and uh, build additional partnerships with foundations and uh, corporations and groups to provide additional services. When skies are blue, we focus on business growth. We have business specialists that can help you with contracts, um, capital, international trade, business planning, um, marketing. When skies are still blue, but we have a pandemic, um, just like a lot of other groups, we shift into disaster recovery mode. So as Althea and Mike uh, mentioned, we are focused 100% right now on helping businesses to survive, to grow, you know, to um, get capital, to get different marketing strategies. Primarily right now, we are focused on, on the bridge loan program through the state of Florida and also the SBA disaster loan program, obviously from the federal government. I was just going to note because I saw in the question section, there is a distinction. The emergency bridge loan program is from the state of Florida. <clears throat> The SBA disaster loan program is from the federal government. They're two separate programs. The bridge loan program is supposed to be an immediate bridge to get you to the disaster loan or to get you to insurance or until conditions improve. Um, and so we're really focused right now to get a lot of businesses those bridge loans. Actually, I have to get off at three o'clock. We have a bridge loan committee meeting today to kind of get some more applications reviewed. Um, but what I was gonna do was they talked about the bridge loan program. They talked about SBA. I was going to note for the bridge loan program, as uh, Mike alluded to, our local SBDC that's here at FIU, we are the local agent for the Florida bridge loan program. I don't personally make loan decisions. What we do is we activate local uh, bridge loan committees of bankers and economic development officials that review your applications. So it's not somebody in, um, you know, up in Tallahassee. It's not somebody in Orlando. It's local bankers here that review it. We're able to turn it around quicker. I would tell you guys though, we are seeing a increased demand for this program. Um, I know that the uh, disasterloan.org website just crashed um, and uh, obviously SBAs is down as well. Just be patient. We're gonna get you the assistance as Althea and Mike alluded to. You should download the paper applications and review those and use those as a checklist because that's gonna help you when you can get online to apply. Um, the second thing I was going to mention regarding SBA disaster loans, um, as Althea mentioned, you, if you're approved, you don't have to take the money. If you need the money, you can take it. But we're encouraging everybody that would be eligible for a, a bridge loan, everybody that would be eligible for SBA, to go ahead and apply because then you can make a decision once you get approved. 
for SBA, you can disperse $25,000 without collateral and you only pay interest on what's drawn down. So if you're approved for $200,000, you're only gonna pay interest on that 25,000 that you took out. Um, also for SBA, as Althea mentioned, if you've got a previous disaster loan from SBA or another SBA loan, you can still apply for an SBA disaster loan. So don't, don't let that discourage you. Um, the third point I was gonna make was business owners right now that we're talking to, they're very focused on cash flow because they're trying to survive the next week, the next two weeks, the next three weeks. One of the things you can do for your business is if you have existing commercial loans, contact your lender to see if you can get a deferment or if it's a line of credit, call and find out what's the eligible use of funds so that you can put it towards what you need right now. If you have an existing SBA loan, 7A or 504, please contact your uh, lender or your CDC and ask for a deferment. They're offering, I think it's up to six months um, of deferment with no payments. So that's a way for you to get some cash flow into your business right now. The other thing I would mention was for the emergency bridge loan program, as Mike noted, there's no interest for one year. You do have to pay the full amount in at the um, one year mark, but you should apply for SBA because what happens is when you apply for the SBA disaster loan, if you're approved, the state coordinates with SBA and they're able to repay to pay off your bridge loan via the SBA disaster loan. And that it's supposed to serve as a bridge. For the SBA disaster loan, you have one year from when you're approved and when things start flowing to not make payments. So basically for the bridge loan, you have one year without payments and for SBA disaster loan, you also have one year without payments. Um, so I would encourage you guys to look into those channels. Um, the other thing I was gonna note is there's a lot of programs coming out. There's gonna be more programs coming out as they noted from the Congress, um, from other groups. I noticed yesterday that Axion just activated a loan program for COVID-19. Um, there's also been some Facebook grants that's been um, distributed information on that are kind of smaller grants for businesses. So just keep on top of all the information and follow you know, the chamber, follow the Beacon Council. They all have really good resources and websites. Um, lastly, I was just gonna mention kind of non-capital. Um, a lot of businesses we've been working with, they're just trying to get through the week or the next two weeks. One thing is if you're a retail business or a restaurant, one strategy that has been working for um, businesses is to go the gift card route if you've already got gift cards, set it up where you can encourage your customers to buy that because that's a way for you to get immediate capital back into your business. People can get the gift card. They don't have to come to your place right now and they can even give it as a gift. They can go later, but that's the way for you to generate some revenue right now. And we've been putting out information. I know other groups have too about how to set up a gift card program if you don't have one. And um, so we'll be happy to share that information. And second, um, a lot of the restaurants, you know, obviously hit really hard. If you're doing takeout, if you're doing delivery services, um, really lean in on your marketing and offer discounts on that. Um, even, you know, putting up banners and things. I've seen a lot of businesses, like I live off of Berg Road and I know our betters has like a big sign, you know, takeout, come up. And I know of a lot of other businesses are doing that, but you can offer discounts for first time users on delivery services. You can also offer discounts on takeout to encourage people to do that. And just emphasize in your marketing, everybody right now wants to help local small businesses. So definitely emphasize about shopping small, definitely emphasize about um, buying local, and then I definitely emphasize about buying often. Because I think in terms of social media and marketing, we wanna hit those points. And with that, um, I'm happy to just be around and answer questions. Um, I see we got a lot of questions in the chat. Thank you, Brian. Yes, we do have many, and uh, we'll we'll open those up in just one second. I just want to uh, remind everyone uh, before we start that your questions should be in writing on the Q and A. I know there's a chat room, but that's not where your questions are going to be looked for. They're going to be in the Q and A section. Please uh, submit them there, and our administrators will will pick it up. Uh, I'm going to ask, I saw that Mike Finney popped up uh, just briefly there. I'm going to ask all of our panelists to please open up their mics and open up their cameras as we go ahead and begin the question and answer uh, period. That way, 
uh, we can make this the most efficient possible. I'm going to turn it over to Spencer Pilant uh, for our first few questions. Spencer. Hi, everyone. This is Spencer Pilant with the Chamber. Um, I have a question here from uh, Jacqueline. Give me one moment. I'm going to unmute your line, Jacqueline. Okay, Jacqueline, you're a massage therapist with an S Corp. Um, can you share your question with the group? I answered that her question incidentally in the Q&A. Okay. Thank and you for that. If she can't answer for herself, I will answer for everyone. Uh, the, her question was pretty much something along the lines of, uh, can an S Corp, uh, she files an S Corp, can she apply? Absolutely. All eligible small businesses can apply for this loan program. Mm -hmm. And Althea, I was just going to jump in for the emergency bridge loan program. They do have requirements related to employees that needs to be between two and 100 um, employees. They changed the requirements. 1099s do count towards the um, employee count, but we have seen a lot of sole proprietors um, that they would not be eligible. They only have one employee. So we stress to them that they can apply for SBA. They would That's be right. eligible for the bridge loan, but they would be eligible for SBA. That's correct. So uh, home-based businesses, uh, single employee businesses are eligible. So please apply. Thank you uh, both. Spencer, can we have our next question? Yes. Um, since this is more of a general question, I'll read it out. Um, Irene asks, how are small businesses going to get through this process quickly without the red tape that's usually associated with this process? And I think any of our panelists that want to chime in on that, let us know how you're expediting processes. Why don't we begin with Mike? Mike, why don't you, uh, Mike uh, DiNapoli, why don't you take that first crack at it? Sure, I can do that. So um, we've received just a tremendous amount of, um, of calls and applications. Uh, we're close to 10,000 applications now unprecedented. Uh, after Irma, we received, I think, 1,100 applications for our emergency bridge loan. Uh, the number is just growing daily and the need is, is growing. Um, so what we've done is we've staffed up. I've got, at any given time, I've got a whiteboard behind me. At any given time, I've got 40 people working um, to, to address the situation from answering phone calls to going through paper applications, entering data. Uh, we, we are making sure, and I've been told to ensure that if there is a bottleneck to address it, and if there's any future bottlenecks that we see coming down the road, uh, again, address it. And you know, one of the things we're working through right now is to ensure that we can close these loans quickly. Getting the applications in and online is wonderful, but if you can't close the loans quick enough to get the money in the hands of these businesses, that's not gonna be, uh, that's not gonna be helpful. This is emergent money. This is money that we wanna get in the hands quickly. Uh, we've done this in the past where we've gotten loans out in three, four, five days. Uh, there is a bottleneck um, um, in the number of loans. Uh, we're getting through them. Uh, we hope to close them within uh, two weeks uh, is, is our goal. We're trying and we're, we're, we're getting staff to do that. And I've been given every opportunity to bring in people that need be. And I was just going to chime in too. Um, I was really going to stress for everybody, whether it's for the bridge loan program or for the SBA, please pay attention to the required documentation, everything that's required to upload. That is going to be additional uh, red tape and issues that you're going to have if you don't follow the direction. I know it's an emergency situation. I know everybody's working virtually, but I've had a lot of applications that I was ready to put to a committee and I couldn't put it to committee because somebody didn't sign something correctly or because people didn't include a business taxes or they didn't include the W-2s. So for me, like, and I'm sure Mike and Althea and everybody else would say the same thing. We want to help you guys and we want to work as quickly as we can but it's kind of like a help me help you situation too, is follow the instructions, follow the checklist, follow everything. Because for us, I had at least six applications I could have sent to Bridge Loan Committee today, but I couldn't send it. One was missing a signature, one didn't have one year's of business taxes. And so then I have to follow up with that um, particular applicant and get more information. And so what I want is I want it as complete as possible so I can turn around and move it quickly. Because trust me, I understand the situation you guys are dealing with. Our next question comes from Daniel, and it's for Mayor Jimenez. Um, he wants to know what measures are being taken with the stay-at-home order, and what are you and the county doing to ensure that others who don't, who don't see the severity of spreading the virus respect this order? Mayor? 
We uh, we issued uh, what's called a, a a stay at home order, but not really a stay at home order. We closed everything that's not essential, and so you, you know, when you leave your home, the only places that you can go to are places that are actually providing essential services. So we closed all the parks, we closed all the beaches, we closed the marinas, all the launching points. Uh, we closed all non-essential services. So people just are going out to do essential business and the people that are actually working at essential services. The, the stay at home, uh, that's the new buzzword. Uh, I, I, it, it, now that other people are starting to do that in the city, uh, actually causes a lot of confusion uh, because it means, oh my God, I can't leave the house. I can't leave the house. Yeah, you can. You have to leave the house to be able to do essential services. Uh, Non-essential services are all closed. And what it does, it then it also thinks that now, hey, I can't even leave the house to go get my food. The government doesn't have the resources to feed everybody in Miami-Dade County. There has to be, activity has to happen. What we are enforcing very, very, very strictly are that when you, when you do go out to, uh, to do these things that you must uh, in order to live, that uh, go to a grocery store, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, those things that are open, that you must practice social uh, distancing, that you must be six feet apart, that those businesses have to uh, uh, make sure that their patrons and, that their, and their employees are practicing that. And if you don't do that, then we'll close you down. And then finally, the message has to be that it's up to us to keep social distancing. It's up to us to assume that everybody is, is uh, infected. Um, you know, government can only do so much. And so at the end of the day, it's impossible to stop all, at people from going out and doing the things that they have to do. Uh, and so, uh, you know, the stay at home orders that I've seen are no more than the orders that have already been issued by Miami-Dade County uh, a week ago and closing all these activities, closing all these you know, large gatherings, closing all of the uh, places where people could, could uh, get together. Yesterday, we issued an order that no more than 10 people could be at any one place at one time. Now it's a time for us to start to really crack down and enforce those measures and also carry the message that it's up to us to separate from each other, to, to, to look at each other as all, all of us being infected. And if we do that and change our behavior, then we can beat this virus. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We're getting a lot of questions about nonprofits. And our next question comes from Patrick. Uh, Patrick, I'm gonna unmute your line one moment. Okay, go ahead, Patrick. Yes, hi, uh, I guess this is to the mayor and maybe to anybody else who uh, makes sense to respond, but please update us on what uh, plans you have specifically to support our nonprofit sector, one of our largest employment sectors in Miami-Dade County, many who are actively involved in the immediate and certainly will be on the long-term response to COVID-19. Others are providing key services that will directly be impacted as a result of the cancellation of fundraising events and for the fact that many rely on fee-for-service revenue models that are not existent at the moment. Thank you. Okay, what we're doing here at uh, Miami-Dade and something that I proved actually today, it's, this is a very timely uh, question, is we are uh, continuing to fund all of our CBOs, our nonprofits that have contracts with Miami-Dade County. We're also asking those, uh, those CBOs, nonprofits that have uh, contracts with Miami-Dade County that are actually we're performing something that really you can't perform anymore to tell us how you're going to kind of shift your, your priorities and provide a service that actually is vital during, during this time. And we're not going to be, and if you can't provide those services uh, that are vital and you're, and you were actually providing something that we've shut down, uh, your, the flow of funds is still going to come your way and, uh, and we're going to change the reporting mechanisms. So we don't want to add to the, to the problems of, uh, of your employees going without a paycheck. And so, so those are a couple of things that we've done for, for nonprofits. Our next question comes from Bernie. Bernie, I'm going to unmute your line. It's for the SBA. Hello. Yes, this hey, is Bernie, Bernie Navarro. Hello. Uh, one of the question is on the SBA. Um, there was two. The, the 1099s. How are we calculating that with FTEs for the disaster uh, loan recovery program? Is that going to be uh, 1099 is going to be equivalent to a full-time employee? 
Hey, Brian, do you know the answer to that question? I mean, it's, it's, I'm gonna, are you, okay, so businesses with 1099s are eligible. Does that help answer the question? But the question yes. was specific to nonprofits? No, to regular companies. Oh, to reg regular companies. Uh, so for the bridge loan program, 1099s do count towards the employee counts. Um, for SBA, I believe that you, you, those would also be eligible too. Yes. And the other question is, if I am a Dade County resident, uh, resident, but I have my business in Puerto Rico, it said, I think you said continental U.S. Is Puerto Rico also? Oh, I, I uh, answered eligible? that question in the in the Q and A. All businesses in the United States and its territories are eligible. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. You're welcome. Uh, okay. May I answer this question ahead. from Alexandra Sitkoff? Uh, she already submitted the PDF application through email. Um, should, oh, I don't think this is an SBA question. Uh, wondering if um, she should also apply online. I thought you um, might. I think, her, yeah, I think that might have been a question for yeah, me. Yeah. I, I think I answered it a few lines down, but no, if you okay. did an application by uh, email or submitting the PDF by uh, courier, please do not submit an application again online. It's just going to make it a little bit more confusing and we're going to have duplicates. But I do want to make sure that we drive everybody who has not started an application either by PDF or um, uh, courier submitted by courier, please do it online. It's mm -hmm. the best place to go the good to do and it. Online. I was just going to reiterate all the ones that were submitted via email. Um, I know some of them were sent um, to DEO or to our headquarters too. Uh, we're processing those. Um, we are following up with folks to acknowledge that we received it. Just bear with us a little bit, as Mike mentioned, we do have a lot of applications, um, but we're acknowledging that we received it. And then our consultants are working, just basically following like a checklist to make sure you have everything that's needed so that we can move forward to process. And I would just reiterate, if you're missing anything, please move quickly on it because like I said, once I get a completed application, I can move it through. I wanna make more work for Mike Monopoly and Florida First Capital. I want them to have a lot of loans that are approved that they have to then start closing and getting you guys the checks. So just kind of help us on that process to make sure everything's complete. May I have- Our next, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to say, uh, someone asked on the uh, Q and A, and I'm delighted that you asked because I neglected to mention this in my presentation. The question was, um, if the business is approved for, say, for example, 200000 but only wants 50000 um, when SBA is ready to disperse the money, um, can they just take the 50000 and come back later? Yes. Yes. I'm glad you asked that. SBA dispenses the money to you, electronic funds transfer, in tranches. So even if you have been approved for 200000 it is you may not get all 200000 at once. So you might get 50 first or 25 and then um, more funds later. So I just wanted to add that. And I would also um, I would also note for you guys too that you can also request a loan modification. Don't do it on the front end. So whatever you submit, just get that submitted. But after you're approved, after you receive funds, you can request additional funding based on your circumstances, based on you know conditions on the ground. Um, SBDC and other groups can help you with that. Also, you can do a loan reduction. So let's say you get approved for 250,000. As Althea mentioned, you don't have to take the full amount. I would encourage you to keep it just in case you need it. But if you really want to, you can actually request SBA and reduce the loan amount. So you can increase it if you need more afterwards or you can reduce it afterwards as well. Let me, can I interrupt to just and, uh, insert this? Because I think there's a lot of uh, questions about the timing of the loans. Um, the mayor said, you know, we, we, and he urged us all to keep our employees. Um, but a, a lot of the businesses are saying, okay, well, I, I can only do that for so long. So how long is the wait for these, uh, these resources to come down? I can, I can jump in just locally from SBDC. I would tell you guys, um, for a normal, normal disaster, um, we could do, we would turn around a completed application within 10 to 14 days. I would tell you guys though, for this particular disaster, we have extreme volume of applications we're going through. Um, I think so far for our center, we have about 300 applications. 
that we're reviewing and then we're obviously going to get more from the online system. Um, so I would say it's going to be a little longer than that. Um, I think we will be a little quicker than the SBA in terms of disbursements and approvals. Um, but it is going to take some time. But that's why I'm really reiterating to everybody, make sure you have a completed application because then it's not on you to, for any holdup, it's on us. So it's on us to process it. And we're working as quickly as possible. I did have some applications that I got last week and I've been able to turn it around to a committee this week, um, but those were applications that were complete. And so, but I would say on, given the volume we're seeing, um, we're shooting for 10 days, we're shooting for two weeks, um, but it might be a little bit longer just as we get more applications in. But trust me, we're running multiple bridge loan committees each committee is reviewing a lot, you know, at least 30 to 40 applications um, at a time when we have them ready, but it is going to take a little time. So I would just kind of say bear with us and just have some patience, but we're going to help you out as soon as we can. I have a question, if I may. Uh, the, the, the presentations that I saw seem to be disaster related uh, programs that have been in existence for some time. Has anybody looked at what is coming down with a $2 trillion package? I can't believe that it's gonna be this kind of a program. It's gotta be something different. So could anybody from the Small Business Administration tell me what you're seeing that's really coming down you know, relative to this coronavirus uh, issue? You're, uh, Thea, you're, okay. No, go back. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, we haven't gotten our guidance yet on uh, what is in uh, the legislation currently. Um, and, you know, not until it's passed will we do anything. Um, I know there are lots of provisions in there, for example, increasing uh, the loan amounts to 10 million loans through banks guaranteed by SBA. So until um, those are approved, uh, we won't no, and then, um, of course, whatever the Congress legislates will do. Well, there's one thing that, you know, there's one thing about a loan, and then there's the other thing is about a forgivable loan, right? Right. And I, I hear there are provisions in that uh, bill as well to forgive the portion of the loans that are used for payroll. Exactly. But, right. Exactly. So we'll have exactly. to wait for that to come out. Exactly. And that's my point. And that's why, Alfred, I've been saying to people, hey, you may want to hold your employees until we see what's coming out. And uh, I also understand there may be provisions in there that penalize you if you actually laid off employees, all right? And so, yes, I'm, I'm trying to get people to kind of hold off until this bill goes, you know, passes. It should pass today, maybe tomorrow, and signed by the president, and then really dig into these provisions because really that's what we're here today. That's what we're here about, okay? We're about that's right. what's happening with the coronavirus. We're happening about that two trillion dollar bill. And so Alfred, I think it's great that we had this, this particular presentation. I would love to have the same, the same meeting in a, in a couple of days or maybe, you know, Saturday. Yes, Saturday, okay. And okay, this is the bill. This is what we have to do. And that's why, and, and really my, my, my offer of help to the SBA is for this bill coming up, all right? Uh, because that's, that's the bill that people are going to be accessing. Uh, that's the bill that's really, you know, been, been the, the, that's the bill that everybody's waiting for. That's right. We had hoped that it was going to have been done by now, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, I'm sure I can speak for my colleague, Mike. Uh, we, we're very interested in doing that when it comes out. I think you're absolutely right. That's, it's a key, key informational dissemination. So, Mike, are, are you with me on this? Yeah, so Mr. Mayor and everyone else, uh, we have been tracking... Uh, the, the, the legislative activity over the past several days to try and understand uh, what's likely to be in the bill. So each time there's been a draft bill that has either been done in the Senate or in the House, we've gotten a copy of that and have actually created uh, a triage process to understand exactly what the features and benefits are uh, of that legislation. And of course, it's moved around a lot, but it has gotten clearer and clearer. And so I won't go into any of the details. Some of them have already been mentioned. Uh, things like forgiveness of certain payroll activities. Uh, we've looked at the use cases uh, that says, okay, these are the kinds of things that this money can be used for and portions of it would be forgiven and so on. But again, until the actual bill is completed, as Mr. Mayor said, uh, it's a little bit hard to give firm direction. But based on the timelines that we're hearing out of Congress, uh, it could be, uh, within 48 hours or so, 
that we actually have a bill. And then our team in partnership with Miami-Dade County and several others, uh, we're actually gonna scrub through that very quickly, obviously in partnership with SBA as well, uh, to scrub through whatever that final bill is so that we can quickly communicate to all the businesses in Miami-Dade County uh, what the features and benefits are and what the direction is that they'll need to follow in order to access those funds. So uh, yeah, there's a large group of people working on it. Uh, the mayor will tell you, we've had his team, uh, you know, day and night, uh, our team, uh, we're doing outreach to SBA. And as soon as we know, uh, we'll try and do what we can to be supportive of whatever the final legislation is. Yeah, I, I think, was just I think for, the, for the businesses, sorry, Mr. Mayor, um, but for the businesses, it does bode well for you guys that the bill, the provisions in the bill look like it's just utilizing existing programs and existing things that are already out there instead of reinventing a new program or creating something. So at least I'm very positive about that, that that might be able to be enacted quickly because it's not something they have to create from scratch. Well, and I would hope also, you know, look, what the, the reason I called Mike some time ago is because I'm sure that there are there's going to be records, there's going to be some kind of a paper trail with all of this, there has to be, all right? And so, but, I, but the, 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 the goal of this, of this entire package is to get money in people's pockets right away, get money in people's pockets that may be laid off or have been laid off uh, so that it doesn't you know, hurt them uh, you know, adversely. And so um, with, with this, because it's been such a big impact uh, to such a large area, then uh, economic wise, um, then I think that you're gonna be inundated with uh, requests and applications that you're probably not, not geared up for and nobody's geared up for. And so that's why, again, I'm offering the help of uh, Miami-Dade County. We have things that we're no longer doing that now we can shift over and, and, then, and then again, this is my focus, trying to get the money to the small businesses as quickly as we can through the federal government and I know the federal government, what, what they want to do, we just need to, you know, get it done. And again, we're offering all our help. We've got a lot of people here. We've got a lot of resources here. And, uh, and we can shift a lot of folks to that, to that focus. Mike is uh, Michael Finney and the Beacon Council are fully on board. I'll, Alfred, I expect, you know, the, the, the chamber, okay, for us to all work really close together so that we can help your members, our citizens, okay, and, um, and our residents. And so... That's the message. As soon as we know what's in this bill, and as soon as we can figure it out, what's in that bill and how and what we need to do in order to get you know money flowing and and the applications in, we need to have another roundtable like this so all your members know what the heck uh, we need to do. Well, we're prepared to do that, Mr. Mayor, and I thank you. I think uh, our uh, chairman has been texting me saying that uh, he, he's all on board. We're we're we stand ready to move on your orders. And Mike, you know that we have you have our our backing as well. Uh, we've got still, we've got about uh, uh, 17 minutes left, so I want to make sure that we get back to some questions. Spence, uh, do you have something you want to put up now? Yes, our next question comes from Roberto. Roberto, you're on the line. Okay, I'm unmuted now. Sorry about that. Uh, can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes. Okay, Go ahead, Roberto. Uh, one of the key, the, the key aspects, I believe, uh, right now are speed the market. And the money speed the market for me uh, really is how long will it take or how long does the SBA uh, expect uh, from application time to the approval and then to the receipt of funds, specifically number of days. Uh, as we progress here, uh, the number of days Okay. After submission is very important. Yeah, thank you for your question. Let me answer it. Um, under normal circumstances, SBA disaster teams, uh, once we receive a complete application, it takes 18 to 21 days to approve under normal circumstances. After that, it takes about another five days to do the closing and disperse the money's electronic funds transfer. This, um, of course, is an unprecedented scenario that we find ourselves in. That is not to say that because we've done it that way before, it will take that long this time as well. SBA is looking to be 
extremely responsive and uh, to the applications that we're getting. So we are ramping up, hiring more people. People like uh, me and my office are uh, being asked to look at disaster loan applications. So a lot is happening to speed up the process. But um, the you know officially, it takes typically up to three weeks to um, under normal circumstances to uh, look at a loan application. So in general, it might it might take a month, and therefore a lot of people kind of are on a very very tight frame on needing food, paying the rent, etc. The, the the banks in Miami. I'm a banker. I want you to know I'm very very pleased. Uh, we have the best county, the best city in the world. Uh, the banks stand ready to support on a bridge basis at a faster pace, I believe, um, and offer that we work together from the banking point of view that perhaps the SBA can wrap us, uh, give us a kind of guarantee or the county in the meantime to be able to get the most dire cases uh, taken care of immediately. Well, because you know in what? fact, time, so is not our, time is not our friend. I'm so glad you said that. The legislation, as I understand it, is going to empower banks to make loans. So what I would say to you and your lender colleagues is to put your systems in place now so that you can be as quickly responsive to uh, your customers and uh, potential customers to get that uh, those funds out to them, because that's going to be really important that you're able to ramp up and, and deliver. So that's very encouraging to hear uh, from you, sir. Our next question um, comes from an elected official. We mentioned at the, uh, the jump that we had some on the call. Um, Commissioner Daniela Dean Cava is on the call and has uh, a question. And uh, Commissioner, I'm making your mic live. Go ahead. Thank you, thank you so much. Well, first of all, thank you to Beacon and Greater Miami Chamber for putting on the program, I'm very honored to serve as the representative from Board of County Commissioners to both business organizations. And uh, this is clearly critical by virtue of everyone being here. Uh, we're a small business economy. We know everybody is hurting. And particularly in our economy that's so tourism based and the entire supply chain. So uh, the resources are critical and we are waiting to hear the details of the federal package like Mayor Jimenez said. Uh, hopefully there will be forgivable loans in there um, and uh, hopefully some additional help for the Unemployment Compensation Fund. And I want to thank Mayor Jimenez for advocating with Governor DeSantis to have more uh, flexibility with that fund. And through executive order, the governor has already uh, made it possible to eliminate one of the um, hurdles, which is the requirement of uh, job search prior to eligibility. So. Uh, we know that uh, you're trying to gear up uh, DEO to get enough people to answer the phones and, and not have the system be overwhelmed, but there are other things we need. We need the benefit level to be higher. Uh, I understand there's quite a surplus in the fund uh, over the years, uh, you know, many millions, if not billions of dollars, so we hope that we can, we can open that up. Um, uh, I also want to point out that there's the short time compensation program. So this is a really great program for small businesses. And since uh, Mayor Jimenez has been urging everybody to hold on to their employees until we see the, the package that comes down, be aware that right now that program allows you to reduce the hours of your employees and the state will make up the difference if it's a, a short-term uh, compensation plan that you come up with. And so if you don't close down entirely but reduce hours, the employees can continue to receive the same compensation. Uh, while you're in the downturn. So I want to definitely bring that to, to everyone's attention. So again, thank you. I think it'll be great to convene again when we know what the federal government is offering. We need to expand what is happening at the state uh, and we need to have forgivable loans as well. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner. Spencer, next question. Yes, sir. Our next question. I'm pulling up, I believe her name is Sandra. Just give me one moment. She has a question for the mayor. Hey Sandra, you're live with the mayor? Black salt. 
Okay, we're having some difficulty connecting, but her question was regarding property taxes, if there's going to be any relief uh, since they're coming up on March 31st. I've, uh, I've asked the, uh, the governor to extend that for another month. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think that he's uh, taking action on that. I mean, he's got a pretty full plate. I will call him again today and see if he can do that. He, I, he may be able to do that through executive order. There's also a technical thing that we want. There's the Florida Department of Revenue. The, the property appraiser has to have their tax roll done by a certain time, and they're really working really hard to do that. I think all, that also needs extended to be extended. Uh, there, there are reasons why they have to be done by a certain time, and people, certain entities can't get their money. Uh, governmental entities can't get their money if that wasn't done by a certain date. We need to extend that too. So yeah, I'm gonna ask them again. I think it's the right thing to do uh, you know, in these times. And so, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. I, I unfortunately don't have that power. It's uh, only the governor can do that. Thank you, Mayor. Our next question comes from Eric. Before Eric starts, can I clarify something? I typed sure. into the chat that um, uh, sections 501 C D and E or someone says I did I am not sure to be honest with you um, I just want to read that an eligible private nonprofit is a non-government agency or entity that currently has an IRS tax exemption under 501 C D or E of the IRS code of 1954 so I just wanted to clarify. I'm not sure what I said or you know where the confusion is, but I just want to read what my slide said. So Althea, just to, because one of the questions that around that has been uh, organizations, nonprofits like the chamber, uh, and many of the chambers are 501c6s, not c3. So, uh, right. so what you're saying, I take to say, to mean that 501c6s are also eligible. No, actually, I asked that question. Currently, sixes are not eligible. But let, let me take the, a moment to say right now, you know, things are changing literally every day. So while, you know, today I might say no, for all I know tomorrow, it'll be yes. Yeah. So um, if you have the time and the inclination, apply. By the time your caseworker sees uh, your application, Things may have changed in your favor. And there's a lot of uh, the discussion in the chat or the questions that are being asked. Folks, please don't talk yourselves out of applying for this loan because you think you're not eligible or you think you make too much money or you don't make enough money. Don't, don't decide for us whether or not we're gonna give you a loan. Just apply, just apply. That's and if and someone else is worried about paying off a loan and. Listen, the term is up to 30 years. If, my, if, if the timelines are right and it's gonna take three weeks to get to an answer, you may change your mind in three weeks, one way or another. But if we approve you and you don't want the money, you don't have to take it. Yeah. If you still want the money, great, take it. But just apply, it begin the process for yourself. That's what I would urge. And Thank I'm a disaster guy. I was going to say before this, they had never made SBA disaster loans nor Florida bridge loans for public health emergencies. And here we are. We're on a webinar talking about SBA right. and bridge loans. So definitely that's a good point. Thank do you. you. Do you think that if you apply, do you think that, uh, that okay, now there's a new program, that that application can be slid right into that new program? Oh, that's a great question. I, I think... Um, I, I would think that we would make our best efforts to um, make whatever is best for our companies available to them. So those kind of backroom uh, notions, we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there. But, um, you know, I, my, my thing is today, if you need the money, apply. If Congress passes that thing in two days and that changes your circumstances, apply for that and then we'll get it all figured out. But in the meantime, you have employees who need to get paid, you have expenses you need to pay, you have a business you wanna keep going, and we want that as well. So that's why we wanna make sure that folks are applying. That's great, that's great advice, Athea. Thank you, we have about six minutes, so I wanna get at least one question more in. Uh, Spencer? Yes, our next question is from uh, Amandine. Um, she's wanting to ask DEO a question, so I'm gonna go ahead and unmute her line. Hi, thank you for taking my question. I really appreciate 
So my um, most important question is for business owner who are not US citizen or green card holders. What are the help available for these business owners, please? So I believe the question was, if you are a green card holder, um, you know, how does that impact the bridge loan process? No, no, the, the question is, if you are not a green card holder or a US citizen, but a business owner, what type of help do you have? Althea, you're on your mute. Yes, so the question is... Sorry, um, uh, let, me, let, me, let me try to answer. So SBA uh, disaster loans are currently, uh, well, it's kind of t hard to answer. Uh, and this is why I didn't try to answer it. Um, the citizens, of course, are eligible. Green card holders, of course, are eligible. Visa holders are a trickier uh, group of people because typically visas are time limited. So we can't, if your visa runs out in two years, how can we offer you a loan that lasts 15 or 30? So, you know, that, that's why I didn't attempt to answer the question. But again, apply. Anything can happen. I think we have one more, one more uh, time for one more question, Spencer. Uh, yes, one moment. Our next question comes from Mitch. He has a question for the mayor. Go ahead, Mitch. Uh, can you hear me? We can. Yes. Yes. So I'm concerned about the um, multiple arts institutions that get uh, that already get a lot of county funding. I know that the source of that funding has typically been visitor tax revenues. That's going to be way down, and yet the need from the arts organizations is going to be way up because they've got no earned revenue for at least a month, probably two months. So um, what's the plan if, if the county has formulated a plan yet for making sure that we don't lose our valuable arts infrastructure? Well, uh, the, one of the major industries that's gonna take a hit obviously is the, is the tourism industry and a lot of the funds for the arts programs comes from our convention development, tourist development taxes that we have here. And so uh, we've gotta take a look at that. Hopefully the program, the, the, the bill being passed by Congress uh, takes into consideration all the revenues that we've lost here in the county and the cities and then tries to get some of that back. I know the ports are, are, are going to be in there. So it's, it's something that we have to watch out for, uh, uh, Mitch. I, I don't have the answer to that question right now. I have to also look at what kind of reserves we have that can, uh, you know, even though our revenues are going to be down this year, can we make that up with reserves as we build back up as our tourism industry, you know, regains its footing. And so it's a great question. It's something that I'm going to have to put forward uh, to the rest of the administration and see what uh, solutions we can come up with. Well, thank you everyone for participating. Uh, we are out of time. So I'm going to uh, try uh, have to close it up. I want to thank you all for participating. These are certainly challenging times, but uh, our community and our country and our leadership uh, is responding and we're going to see this through together. The, the Chamber and the Beacon Council will continue to put forth the content relevant to your business and recovery. Certainly, as the mayor has uh, asked us, we're going to put together another virtual town hall once the specifics of the, uh, of the latest uh, stimulus package comes out. So please, we urge you to follow, go to our websites, follow our social media for the latest information and be on the lookout for that. Um, that really concludes our virtual town hall. I want to thank all of our distinguished guests. We, we asked you in a short time and you responded quickly to spend a significant amount of time when we're all uh, sort of, you know, in the midst of uh, dealing with the uh, uh, something we've never dealt with. So I want to really thank you for sharing very valuable information that I know has benefited our, uh, our, our folks on, online. On behalf of the Beacon Council and the Greater Miami Chamber, I want to thank all of you for joining us, and we hope that you found this session valuable uh, and that you're going to continue to join us as we uh, hold subsequent virtual town halls. So for now, we're going to say goodbye, be well, and be safe.